Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Cardsphere.com and we'll take a look at them a little bit later. Uh, I got a dealer's choice donation deck list from Josh H and I had the opportunity to kind of browse through some of the recent 5-0 deck lists and I found that Enchantress had a 5-0. Now Enchantress used to be a premier anti-blue deck list. Uh, basically, before the printing of cards like Abrupt Decay, Prismatic Ending, Brazen Borrower, before the days of these just like very generic main deckable answers, a in game one, an enchantment used to hit the table and never leave. And so you used to be able to just get some early mana ramp that your opponent couldn't really disrupt outside of counter spells. And then you just set up an incredibly strong draw engine with cards like Argothian Enchantress and Enchantress's presence just allowing you to spiral. Fast forward a few years, sort of in the wake of fire design, and now many decks have something in the main deck that can just bounce or otherwise answer an enchantment. And those cards aren't as sticky, I guess for lack of a better word, as they used to be. So this is a deck that has basically fallen out of the metagame entirely. You might see a diehard Enchantress player from time to time, but it's not the sort of deck you pick up and go, ah, this is Enchantress's weekend. This is Enchantress's time to shine. So I was really excited to see it in the 5-0 decklist dump. Now, maybe part of the reason for that is that we do have a new enchantment-based removal spell, Ossification. It enchants a basic land you control, and when it enters the battlefield, you exile target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls until ossification leaves the battlefield previously cards like on thin ice were very able very easily able to answer creatures but planeswalkers was a much harder type to answer and you often had to go way up higher on the curve in order to do that ossification fixes that problem and we do have a full playset of that in the 75 um, in terms of an actual win condition, there's basically two. First, you have Rest in Peace in play, and then you activate Helm of Obedience. Uh, you all have probably seen the Leyline of the Void, Helm, uh, Helm of Obedience combo on my channel plenty of times in playing the Mono Black decks. This is the same thing, just with Rest in Peace in the stead. And the second way we're looking to win is by activating a Destiny Spinner turning a land we control into an XX murdering elemental creature with Trample and Haste, where that X is the number of enchantments I control. Um, so generally speaking, we're looking to Snowball, and Sarah's Sanctum is going to be the land that kind of enables most of the broken things that we can do. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna play some enchantments, we're gonna hopefully draw a lot of cards, and hopefully not just die to combo that we can't interact with. Um, that has always kind of been one of the weaknesses of this deck list. This deck list tends to be good versus fair stuff, especially if you can't remove enchantments. And you can create sort of a hard lock, maybe a hard soft lock with solitary confinement. You skip your draw step, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice it unless you discard a card. You have Shroud, and you prevent all damage that would be dealt to you, which generally speaking means that you're damn near impossible to kill. There's things that can get around it, but it is real tough. So as long as you have a couple of these draw card effects in play, you don't actually care that you're skipping your draw step. Um, nothing too exciting in the sideboard here, just kind of all legacy staples. Uh, so I think let's go ahead and hop into the matches here. If you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It is the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. Okay. I have kept my opening hand here. I wish that I had one more mana source, but I don't really think that this is worth throwing back. I will select white here so that I have access to all of my spells. Assuming that I stick an Argothian Enchantress, like, I will draw the necessary cards to, like, continue hitting my land drops, or I can just do it naturally. So I have Dryad Arbor in this deck list. Sometimes Enchantress plays it. No, I do not. All right. So let's go land drop into just an immediately Shroudy Argothian Enchantress. I don't just want to play Sithis into open uh, Source of Plowshares mana here. 
we are probably playing against some sort of Bant control deck, if I were to guess. There's other things that this can be. You know, you could be... Ooh. Yeah, that is happening. So this deck may be closer to, like, the Stone Blade side of the equation. I think I'm going to go with mana efficiency here. This is still an enchantment creature. This will still draw me a card. Ooh, Ferris Sanctum is a great pickup. Okay, days. I cannot pay for that. Now we'll go ahead and just go to a different phase here. All right, no brainstorm. And second main phase, we'll go ahead. Oop. Right, I was accounting for Sithis resolving when I did my mana count. This isn't an enchantment itself. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to just make another mana with On Thin Ice here. A little awkward that I played this out if my opponent just has another Wasteland. Yep. Hey, Levy. I think I want to fetch a forest. Um, no, I don't have to. Go ahead and just cast a Rest in Peace. Alright, cool. I'm going to go ahead and fetch around a Stifle here. And call it a turn. At some point, I'll play an Enchantress's Presence, and this will start spiraling a little bit harder than it is now. Yet another land drop. I think I play that to play around days. This one draws me a card this turn. There's a very niche scenario where I want to fetch first. It involves my opponent having both days and stifle. All right, uh, yeah, we'll chill here. A little low on actual factual enchantments, but I don't think that super matters. Not under any pressure here. Drawing a lot of cards. I'm at the point where I'm going to play most of my critical spells around removal. I'm dodging swords to plowshares with my stuff that matters. I have on thin ice for something like a Stoneforge Mystic or a Cauldra or whatever. And if my opponent is more in the Seppel at breakfast ballpark, I have a rest in peace in play already. Okay, we're seeing this again. That's fine. I might end up just using On Thin Ice on the token just to draw some cards. Um, that's super cool. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave a white floating here. Play an Argothian Enchantress. And cast Ancestral Recall. Pretty good in this format. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I mean. Like, we're, we're going to bury fair blue decks... Because, like, our stuff is hard to remove. I don't know exactly what my opponent's build is going to look like. They're a little lower to the ground than I expected if they're playing that staff. Like, that, I've seen that more in these, like, Dark Typhoon currency converter type builds. Uh, it's possible I want to play Stony Silence or, and or Force of Vigor. If I shut off Stony Silence, then I'm not getting Helm kills anymore. I kind of like Helm Kills. My opponent could have Urza Saga. My opponent can't have Planeswalkers. Days in Wasteland make that a little less likely. I probably... Probably don't need to remove creatures in the early turn with On Thin Ice. I can probably change that to Ossification. On Thin Ice cantrips better. I'm going to go down one Caracas for one Boseju. I don't think changing out that mana number, like my mana producing pip ratio, is a critical problem here. I'm gonna swap an on thin ice for an ossification. I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't do that on the draw. Yeah, I I don't I don't really know that I want to sideboard much here. Yeah, this hand is perfectly reasonable. I'll be sad if Argothian Enchantress gets countered. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the way this hand looks. Okay, there there are lower to the ground elements than what I initially saw. Um, I will just be starting out with a wild growth, see if my opponent wants to daze that. If they do daze that, I play on thin ice around daze next turn. All right. Okay. So my, uh, my opponent apparently just kind of bricked on threats last game. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now, this one itself is not uncounterable. Let the record show. I think I will go ahead and 
drop this this turn. This is only scary in double counter spell instances. There's the first one. So for example, a daze backing this up now is probably a problem. I don't know that I can just take the damage from these this turn and still stay on track to realistically win this game. So I am going to take this risk here. Yep. I just don't know that I can take that turn off there when there is a very good chance that my opponent just plays like a Merktide Regent next turn. Like I will just die to this stuff. I'm not in a very good defensive position right now. Yeah, so I guess this is just another type for Dragon Rage Channeler. So this is essentially Jeskai Delver. What is this? Ooh, a prismatic ending. Okay, yeah. This is what I was talking about in the deck tech of like decks having real cards that can answer my stuff now in a way that they didn't used to be able to do. Good on you for uh, getting into the red zone though, young Pyromancer. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And counting a fetch land, I'm not really on outs anymore. They, they don't have two turns to like play and do rest in peace. And if I draw, okay, I have exactly one out and it's very dumb. Okay. All right, Enchantress in play. I believe my next card needs to be Solitary Confinement. I then need to draw a new enchantment off of casting solitary confinement to stay in this game. I'm at three. I'm already dead to lightning bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and just fetch thin the deck. Uh, sure. Okay, I guess that technically stops me from getting a dryad arbor. That, I guess, does have some text. All right. Uh, I do not believe this leads to me having any outs. I can't draw solitary confinement now. Yeah, uh, unfortunate. Well, I guess we can give it the old college try. This does float some mana. Give me a draw too, but I, again, can't think of anything that gets me out of this. I guess absolutely perfect Sithis draws with life gain could. Uh, exile the thing that I can't possibly block. Need to draw another green thing here to have any chance. All right, concede. Now I know what I am playing against for sure. So ossification becomes more attractive and endurance becomes more more attractive. Boseju doesn't matter. I'll get Caracas back in there for an extra white source for these. Sterling Grove is kind of medium. It protects from exactly prismatic ending and I guess lightning bolt on destiny spinner. Elm is slow. Um, I think after seeing that my opponent is going to randomly play Containment Priest against me, I'm going to cut my one copy of Green Sun and just not go there. Also not mana efficient. And at this point, I'm not really sure what to cut. The rest in pieces are innately good, so I don't want to cut them, which means I don't want to cut the Helms. Destiny Spinners make my stuff uncounterable. I can't cut Ramp, I can't cut Removal. That kind of leaves me looking at Starling Grove or Sithis, which is just vulnerable to Removal. But Sithis is also life gain that matters. It may be that I don't actually want Endurance. Like, the easiest direction I see is this, this, and I just kind of pretend that Prismatic Ending doesn't exist. Endurance is very slow, but it very much soaks up a lot of damage in the cases where it works. It's just, like, not an enchantment which matters. Um, this is fine. I wish it had a touch more mana, but this is fine. That's one of the easiest ways for me to just lose the game, is just physically not having enough mana to deploy my cards and get things started. And then I'd like to draw another land so that I don't have to play Sarah's Sanctum out in the next turn cycle. That again, thing's so bad here. Yep, okay. Uh, that helps a lot. Gaze is a problem. I'm going to play this out so it looks like I have mana when I really don't. So we will cast a Utopia Sprawl. Oh, thank god it resolved. Um, I think I still name white in case this gets wastelanded. Again, I would still like to draw another land. I want to be able to double spell next turn if possible. Oh god. Okay. Okay, that is fantastic for me. 
So, go ahead and fetch. I need one of these. Vulnerable to Lightning Bolt, vulnerable to Lightning Bolt. I wish I could just play like this. I think I play the one with the highest upside if it does stick here. I fully expect this to die. All right, there's a plateau in there. Um, that probably should have been done end of turn. Probably doesn't matter in any world. Plateau notably doesn't cast Merktide Regent. Okay, yeah, that's fine. The counter goes on the staff. Uh, Vista is great. I have to think about whether or not I want to cast this Enchantress's Presence now. If my opponent doesn't have Days, it's so good to cast that now. I'm going to fetch with this. This always fetches Forest. I know that. I think in terms of impact on the game, casting this here is very good, but I haven't forced my opponent into a situation where they've had to use a counter spell yet. So I'm hoping that I have the time to do this. Please me. Okay, yep. Yeah. Minor misstep in there too. It's just leaving me a little light in terms of things to actually go with the Enchantress's presence. Uh, basically, no matter what next turn, unless my opponent plays like a Merktide Regent-sized threat, um, I think I have to just jam Enchantress's presence into whatever counter spells are there. One damage is nothing. Oh, don't do it. Don't make me cast my ossification prior to Enchantress's presence. I hate it. Okay, yeah, there it is. I, I can't take a hit for seven here. I have to play ossification. Wild growth. Target planes. Three mana, Enchantress's presence. Two mana, ossification. Vulnerable to daze. I cannot have this ossification dazed. I will just die. I, I maybe don't cast wild growth yet. All right. Let's just go ahead and cast an ossification. Exile Merktide Regent. And I think past the turn there, save wild growth is something that helps cast Enchantress's Presence. Or sorry, that draws a card with Enchantress's Presence. Because cards are currently my bottleneck. I'm about to escape the portion of the game where I care about my mana. Okay. Oh. Uh huh. Yeah, yep. So on my turn, I'm just jamming in Enchantress's Presence and hoping it doesn't get dazed as my opponent's final card in hand. Okay, great. So one, two, three. Cast Enchantress's Presence. Doing it around Daze. And then we'll go ahead and cast Wild Growth. Get a card out of it. Okay. My opponent's damage can rack up pretty quickly. My opponent's pausing here. I think their last card is actually Days, so that's going to be something to keep in mind for the future. All right, they're going to draw a card. Young Pyromancer staff thing is pretty cool. It is a good amount of card advantage. Am I just playing that in this turn cycle? Just playing that in this turn cycle seems fine. Like, taking out the Young Pyromancer mid-combat matters a lot. So the creatures come in. And I attempt an Endurance. Boo. Um, so there's a scary amount of damage incoming. Um, I need a Solitary Confinement in relatively short order. So my plan is cast Enchantress's Presence and then luck into Solitary Confinement for the following turn. Because I, I just can't one-for-one one my opponent with removal when they're going this wide of me. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. Sorry, I had to step away from the computer for a minute. Um, so my opponent resolved their brainstorm. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that's very bad here. One, two, three, four, five mana to work with. I don't see how exactly I get out of this. Two, three, four, five, six. I guess I have to hit a white removal spell off this draw, uh, which I did not do. So I am unfortunately dead on board to Merktide Regent and friends. Um, GG's. Cool deck building. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was browsing all of the recently completed trades on Cardsphere.com. It seems like some people are really interested in Optimus Prime Hero for one reason or another. 
And Cardsphere recently rolled out their marketplace, which allows you to buy cards from other users directly. So if you're in the market for some cards, but you don't necessarily want to pay a lot of money for them or use a big site, consider checking them out. Uh, my opening hand has no real mana. Now, this is a little slow, but fine. I'll be throwing back Ossification here. And uh, let's start some mana ramp. I'll be able to Green Sun for an Argothian Enchantress next turn and then actually start drawing some cards. All right, are we doing Delver things again? Or are we doing, like, Sneak and Show type things? Or I guess also technically Control things can happen as well. Uh, let's fetch and see if I get stifled. Did not get stifled. I think I play in a way that helps me play around soft permission rather than in a way that maximizes my card draw. Like, if I'm playing against Delver and I invalidate all Wasteland Spell Pierce type cards for the rest of the game, I think that's very good for me. If I'm playing against Sneak and Show, Okay, I don't know what I'm playing against, but I was correct to play around days. Until the end of your next turn, you can play those. Okay, so days is on my radar. Is this just Delver with extra steps? This might just be Delver with extra steps. I think I start here. I could start with Destiny Spinner and take yet another turn off. I use so little of my mana if I do that, and then like this just gets bolted a good portion of the time, and like my opponent just moves on with life. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and expose this to Force of Will. Yep, I accept that. I knowingly made that decision. I have On Thin Ice as a removal spell. Okay, there's another Reckless Impulse. Now Dragon Rage Channeler and Scalding Turner out there. Yeah. Reckless Impulse is no EI, but this is kind of cool. All right. So this is going to be kind of a weird scenario because like I'm just gonna have in play what I have in play but hopefully I just have some reasonable top decks I also think I should have maybe fetched around a stifle there because this is always getting forest third reckless impulse sure and this can be cast from exile the blue card comes from hand so it's not like there's a restriction on this where you can only do this if it's in your hand all right, there is the Dragon Rage Channeler. So let's fetch that forest I was talking about at end of turn. So this is cool. I don't know that I need to cast that right now into Lightning Bolt. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, just activate targeting a forest. Yeah. Instant's already in there. Yeah. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to endanger Destiny Spinner in combat. I think I don't. I think next turn, like, potentially just playing Sithis into something else is very good. I just don't want my opponent to, like, fetch Brainstorm. And then something else happens. We'll see if this is Mystic Sanctuary, Reckless Impulse. It is. I mean, at least the cards are a little more restrictive than with EI. All right, my opponent junks a day's Lightning Bolt is annoying here. And Merktide Regent was the other one. Yeah, very legitimately annoying. My opponent has cast a 2-mana draw 2 four times this game, and it is turn 5. Just throwing that out there. In case anyone is keeping track at home. Alright. Cast a Sithis. Tap this. Wild Growth this forest. Draw a card. And hopefully chain together a bunch of spells here. Yes. Pretty much exactly what I wanted. So ossification, draw a card, nice. Well, kind of. Ossification, exiles, Merktide Regent. And I'll be calling it a turn there. But just a little note, I can just cast this as an enchantment to gain one life and draw a card and essentially cycle this. Or replace the one that just got lightning bolted. That's fine too. Um, still only three card types in Graveyard. I'm at a healthy 18 life. That can change quickly. Like, I can essentially be on a three-turn clock, depending on what happens here. There's no world where this currently gets Force of Willed. I will cast it now. It's possible I am supposed to save it and play it next turn. 
but for some of the like runner runner scenarios it is kind of important for me to have this in play this also just blocks either one of these creatures if my opponent doesn't flip delver and doesn't make dragon rage channel or bigger all right cool yeah we saved two points of damage by playing this out i'm not going to fetch with this preemptively all right I might fetch with that now. I don't really need to. It's wild growth, some land, draw a card. Play the enchantress that I drew. Wouldn't surprise. Oh, no, no counter spell. So now I am, in theory, getting two draws per enchantment that I draw, and I just need to not brick off on drawing an enchantment to start things off. My top card is a land next turn. It's pretty bad for me. Okay. That is a brainstorm dazing their own card so that they can bounce their mystic sanctuary. That is the fourth card type into the graveyard. Paying for their spell. I will be fetching end of turn now. Like this is 6, 12, 18 damage and it's not really going, like one life is not going to matter here. Um, actually it might because of Sithis. And maybe I don't actually fetch to thin. Alright, mystic sanctuary will put back reckless impulse I assume. Could put back Lightning Bolt, though. Okay, sure. Um, this seems like poor turn usage, because my opponent just turned off their Dragon Rage Channeler. I guess if they have the Ponder, they can turn it back on immediately. Yeah, I guess that was fine. Sure. Alright, Wasteland is gone. New Dragon Rage Channeler. 6, then 9 is 15. Uh, Unholy Heat's real bad. Uh, I hope this doesn't end up being good. This is a little obnoxious. Like, it's a huge step down from EI, but... I think my opponent is now on their sixth Reckless Impulse this game. Ugh, and I bricked. Uh, I'm probably dead? I'll continue playing as if I am not dead, but... My opponent gets a whole lot of looks add a lightning bolt to kill me right now yep oh no they topped a card i would be binning almost everything except lightning bolt in their position there's a bobble arctide regent got junked there they don't need more power okay i believe that's number seven they just topped something uh force of will doesn't super matter ponder is very good that's just so many more looks at lightning bolt my opponent has 18 cards remaining in library on turn 9. Three of those cards are named Lightning Bolt. Cool. Game. Um, I would like Endurance and Ossification. Board out the Green Sun for being slow and clunky. And last time around I boarded out these. I think that's even better versus versions that probably don't have more than one or two cards that can interact with enchantments. I have kept my hand. It is very much not my ideal hand, but I think this is a hand that just has enough mana that I'm not just going to be vulnerable to an initial counter spell or wasteland just kind of immediately ending the game. I think I just play around days here. So let's attempt to just remove this creature, and we do so. This is the upside of keeping a hand that just has a bunch of mana in a somewhat safe way. I do have to keep in mind Minor Misstep is a card that exists. Oh, no more land drops. I'm going to go ahead and fetch around Stifle here. I will drop a Sithis into play, and if my opponent Lightning Bolts it on their turn, cool, like, that's their turn. And that is... Quite good for me. Yep. No, that's totally fine. I get to repeat the same thing next turn. Ooh. Let's play Sithis. I think since this cantrips anyway, I take the risk on days here. I would not take the risk here if I didn't already have Sithis in play, but like days is so detrimental to my opponent here. Nice. Um, yeah. I have an ossification for my opponent's first threat. I have half of a win condition in here. Uh, Reckless Impulse, pretty damn good. 
Like those were about perfect hits. My opponent, despite being very low on mana, will get to use all their cards. Another wasteland, sure. Okay. So they get a card. Uh, Destiny Spinner is great. That'll at least give my opponent a real choice about what to do with their Lightning Bolt. That's interesting. So if my Sithis gets the axe, I have another one. If my Destiny Spinner gets an axe, I can start turning Sithis into a cantrip, or at least think about doing that. And if my opponent Lightning Bolts one of these creatures to use their cards optimally, then Murktide Regent isn't happening, which is very good. Uh, yep, this is all fine for me. Uh, I'm not going to fetch here because there are some timelines where I do actually... That's a very bad draw. Want extra white mana to finish that thought. Alright, opponent goes to 16. I will drop a new Sithis and call it a turn. I'm fine versus a Marktide Regent currently. Brotherhood's End. Uh, that's pretty rough. That was kind of not on my bingo card of things that I had to worry about. Hell yeah. I've got two cards in hand. This is very likely to resolve and then stop Marktide Regent and Dragon Rage Channeler from mattering. Uh, that's a big hit. And then these two Helm of Obediences that are in my hand went from being a dead card to being an actual win condition. It is very good. Reckless Impulse finding Reckless Impulse. Ugh. All right, sure. Lightning Bolt and Wasteland. Those are fine. Land? Uh, not land, but a good card. I'm debating whether or not I'm playing these around days. I think I'm playing both of them around days. Like, I'm not in a rush. My opponent has no threats in play. And their graveyard is shut off as a resource. Like, at any point, I can just draw, like, a Sarasanctum or another land, and then all of a sudden Helm is much scarier than it currently is. Uh, sure. With Mystic Sanctuary cut off. Oh, sure, you're just gonna bolt my face. That's perfectly reasonable to use your mana. I should actually have fetched right there. Well, there's zero chance that I get stifled. Okay, there's that other wasteland. That's a solitary confinement. I'm not really ready for that card. I think I'm just chilling. How do they, how do they always have that? How is it just always around? All right. So oh, let's see if Delver flips. Is smash to dust. Destroy artifact. Wow. Okay. That means that I don't get to cantrip off a bunch of my stuff. Uh, and I take six damage. I can then just like get rid of this stuff. So it's not like the biggest deal in the world. Oh, I don't have another basic planes. I'm only getting rid of one of these then. All right, there is Destiny Spinner. Are your two cards exactly Lightning Bolt and Daze? It's incredibly unlikely that that is the case. However, I am going to play around that exact scenario. Do the Delver, because that can come back and not do three damage. The unfortunate thing here is that, like, it's somewhat likely that my opponent has... Oh, no, I guess it's not super likely that they have... Counter spells or Destiny Spinner would have gotten the axe. Dragon Rage Channeler, sure. Alright, uh, I think I just go for it here. So this is Helm of Obedience, around days. Okay, cool. So I normally wouldn't expect Delver to be able to deal with Argothian Enchantress, but here we are. I don't think I'm changing anything about my boarding, though. This hand is unexciting to me, but has multiple removal spells and multiple things that can card draw cards. I think I'll keep it. It's not my ideal. I would prefer something with more mana, but it is what it is. I love that draw. What you got, opponent? Something. Cantrip or creature? Or are we just starting out with Reckless Impulse? Okay, sure. Awkward. So if I don't play a card here, I negate that force of will ever doing anything. I can I can essentially take a blue card out of their hand and deal one damage to them. 
or I can just wait. I think I am just going to wait. I will, however, fetch. I'm just gonna blank that force of will. I can still lightning bolt my face, uh, which gets better if they have a dragon rage channeler. Uh, negative. Okay, cool. So we blanked a force of will by waiting. I'm always fetching basic forest here, I think. I don't want to play Sithis into other lightning bolts. I think I play rest in peace around days. This doesn't run into days. It doesn't run into minor misstep. It just runs into force of will or force of negation. Pitching submerge. Understood. I'd like to draw another white mana source or a one mana green card. So that I can play Sithis and do something with Sithis immediately. That's kind of where I'm at. That is big ol' Merktide Regent, three turn clock. My most mana efficient play is Argothian Enchantress and On Thin Ice. I cannot play On Thin Ice into days here. It just is not reasonable to do so. so I'm going to go ahead and cast On Thin Ice as my first spell for turn, see if I can exile Merktide Regent. I do. Then I am fine casting Argothius and Ench Enchantress into days. Okay. I could have gotten one more card out of that, but I don't think it was correct to try. Like, the price is 7 life, and that is a lot. That is just so much. Force of Negation. No land drop. So I just want to play Creatures this turn. I will go ahead and play a Sithis, which draws me a card. It's actually probably fine to just play Enchantress's Presence and treat it as a draw to, or play Sithis and treat Sithis as a draw to. Yeah, that's probably okay. Do Enchantress's Presence. Go up to 16, draw a card, see if my opponent wants to pitch one of their cards. They do? Alright, I got rid of a Brazen Borrower, which is great. So now I have two removal spells in hand. Plus Solitary Confinement, plus another thing that can draw me cards if my opponent has, like, Brotherhood's End. I feel pretty good about my position. Bolt on Sithis is fine. Sithis is 100% replaceable. Goodbye, Sithis. And my opponent's low on resources. I imagine from here that I'm just good. So let's grab another Forest. Yeah. Immediate Lightning Bolt on Sithis. Uh, that's poor sequencing on my end. That loses me a card. Um, overall, it seems fine, though. I have so much mana, holy crap. Uh, now that this is uncounterable, go ahead and ossification, remove the Dragon Rage Channeler. Goodbye. And uh, I imagine a turn or two from now, I will probably win the game. A lot of it depends on whether or not my opponent plays more creatures out that, like, give me targets for ossification. Bobble happens, um, but it seems like my opponent does not have... Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, they couldn't cast Merktide immediately. This is a Helm of Obedience. I'm kind of thinking about casting Solitary Confinement just to draw a card. I think that's better than passing my turn. Yeah, I think that's better than passing my turn. All right, it is kind of a brick here. One, two, three. Play out a Caracas here. There's four mana. Go ahead and floop a Helm into play. So that is chilling for later. Yep, that's fine. Teller is also fine. I'll go ahead and discard a Boseju here. Cast Ossification. Draw a card off it. Exile Merktide Regent. I use my first Sarah Sanctum here. Cast Destiny Spinner. Does this have to target a basic land? No, just target land. Um, let's get a forest out of my deck real quick. Yeah. Uh, activate this. Target a land. Draw a card. Pick green. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I think I'm just going to keep going here. Utopia Sprawl, some land. Draw a card. Pick green. It is four, right? Yeah. Target my Caracas. My Caracas can crash in for seven. I'll sacrifice my solitary confinement on my 
upkeep. I don't need it anymore. Hello, Delver. Delver did not flip. Yes, you may wasteland my Sarah Sanctum. I have a couple more at the ready. Yep, this is all fine. Uh, upkeep. Start a land. I didn't actually want to do that. Uh, no, nothing matters here. Sarah Sanctum. Destiny Spinner. Starting one of these. Yeah. Destiny Spinner. Targeting another one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, GG. But I definitely, like, talked through a line there and then just did not take the line that I was talking about. Sloppy on my end. Okay, if we're playing against Delver for the third round in a row, this hand is totally reasonable, but otherwise it doesn't have an Enchantress effect, which usually means that I'm pitching those hands. Yeah, this hand is so much stronger. I either throw back Destiny Spinner number two or third land. I think I'm going to throw back Destiny Spinner number two, um, not knowing what my opponent is playing. Uh, that tends to be an unfair land. And if we're playing against an unfair polluted Delta deck, honestly, I probably just don't win. And, like, that's kind of one of those it-is-what-it-is situations, but it, it's just the truth. They were hoping that this is just, like, a Delver or a Control deck and not, say, Doomsday or Ant or something. I think I choose white. Kind of close, because, like, I already have access to two white mana off of these, and green tends to be the mana bottleneck in a good portion of the games. Main phase fetch land. You entombing. Brainstorming. Personal tutoring. Entombing. All right. In good news, like, we have some endurances and rest in peace. And I technically have, like, removal spells that can get rid of those. Yeah, that's a grizzled ad. Elms are going to be pretty good against my opponent. I've got that going for me. I don't have a lot of time here. All right, my opponent's going to go for, like, discard or unmask or something here. Or alternatively, just trying to discard some extra cards and throw another creature into the bin. <laughs> okay. Can I win this game with Solitary Confinement as of right now? Probably not with Archon of Cruelty happening. I mean, I'm kind of assuming that it's happening. Like, I can Sterling Grove and Tutor for Something put it on top of my library. Like, either one of my creatures does nothing. By Sterling Grove, get Solitary Confinement, I'm going to run out of cards very quickly for Argothian Enchantress-based reasons. Let's choose Enchantment. Fuck, yeah. Alright. Next game. Yes to Endurance, yes to Containment Priest, Ossification. That's just basically the limit of what I can do. Green Sun slow and is coming out. Rip Helm stays in. That's my primary win condition, honestly. Sterling Grove is slow. Solitary Confinement doesn't stop loss of life. It only stops damage. That's relevant versus Archon. I think I cut these for being slow. Go down something like a couple of Destiny Spinners or Enchantress's Presence. Maybe one of each. I could consider playing another Boseju for some niche Animate Dead lines. That's got an Endurance, but is otherwise not a keepable hand. Um, that is a turn to Rest in Peace if I don't eat an initial discard spell. That's pretty strong. I think I throw back second Enchantress. I don't know. Like, discard spells are a thing. Mana efficiency matters. Um, play on mana efficiency here. Oh, it's not going to have anything that messes with my lands. I can just get a Savannah on turn one. All right, we're going to stare at each other. I am going to go ahead and grab a Savannah here. All right. Oh, that's tempting. That's very tempting to wait a turn and then not play into counter magic. But I just lose to Entomb into Reanimate Idiot, so I don't think I can take that turn off. I think I just have to make the attempt here. I've gotten movement. It is unfortunately the days. My opponent did not float black to just entomb, so that's good news for me. The bad news now, though, is that like I'm in kind of an awkward situation in terms of mana. I don't have enough to double spell next turn. See what my opponent can do here. I don't think I show Caracas. Let's uh 
start trying to draw some cards, I will need to probably draw into a real removal spell. Caracas does some stuff, but not enough. Like if my opponent puts a Grizzlebrand in play, draws 7 to 14 cards, that is going to do an extreme amount of damage to me. Uh, we're getting super lucky by dodging in Tomb. All right, cool. Uh, I'm not willing to crack this fetch land yet because I don't necessarily know what I want. I think I play Destiny. I don't know. My opponent could be going towards Show and Tell. Like, I think it's super reasonable, in fact, to think that my opponent is going towards Show and Tell. In which case, I just want to draw the extra cards here to just have more raw looks at cards that I can put in. Am I getting dazed? I'm good with that. Like that still nets me two cards. Okay, yeah. This is good. Is it show and tell time? Um, I think I just put in on thin ice here. Match that to a land. Exile Archon. Sacrifice an Enchantress. This is kind of tough. I think I just keep Solitary Confinement since it guaranteed draws a card. Is what I want right now. All right. I will actually just fetch to thin first. Do not want to draw more lands. I'm probably not keeping Solitary Confinement around. All right, we managed to draw a land anyway. I will just sacrifice Solitary Confinement at my upkeep. That was just three mana cycle. And get temporary protection from discard. See if my opponent has like a second show and tell. Oh, they do. I'll put in my forest. There's an Ashen Rider. That should exile my planes here. And then they also get their Archon back. All right, yeah, my opponent figured it out. Uh, oh, is this a target? Target opponent, okay. So, I lied. All right, let's run hot here. Yes. Ask this, draw a card. Yuck. I'll be exiling the Archon here. I can't beat that card. I can maybe beat an Ashen Rider. Although it's tough. I have to remember that Prismatic Vista does not fetch a basic planes. My basic planes is currently in exile. I'm eating five damage here. Uh-huh. I don't beat another Archon here. I mean, I probably don't beat a Grizzlebrand either, for what it's worth. Okay. So my opponent will draw at least seven cards. Nope. Okay. I mean, that keeps me alive. However, it is not pretty. I'll let them go to combat. And I'll both sage you that animate dead. This gives me another turn. My turn has to just be... Absolutely insane. Have multiple runners, I think, to beat whatever my opponent is going to have at the end of this turn cycle. Oh, my opponent goes goes deeper. You have a swamp. I go to three. My opponent has sixteen cards. I just I just assume this doesn't bode well for me. Okay, Grizzlebrand is back. Pseudo vigilance. We're doing something with this on the stack. No, okay. Alright, cantrip time. I assume that three floating blue mana just means that I'm about to eat another show and tell for something else big and dumb. Nope. Just bad sequencing. So my opponent floated a bunch of mana in the middle of resolving an ability, and then once something else has happened, you can't undo that mana tapping anymore. Alright. Let's do some things. Okay. Pick white. Two mana. Ossification. Targeting a land. Draw another one. That's not great for me. Trax is in my opponent's deck as well. Holy shit, if they didn't have that force of will. On thin ice. Ah. Oh. Okay, they had three force of wills. Uh, that is not going to do me any good here. I am dead to onboard creatures. GG's. I tried. Alright, simply put, this hand doesn't have enough mana. Um, this hand also really doesn't have enough mana, but on a mold of six, this is perfectly acceptable. I think I'm going to go with Enchantress's presence here. 
I think I could have a 10 minute long discussion about that mulligan decision. Probably playing against Red White Initiative. Just my first thought at Plateau Pass. Go Forest. Copious Brawl. I will name White so that if I get Blood Mooned, I still have access to both of my colors. And the next turn, I can play Argothian Enchantress and Prismatic Vista a lot of the time, not all of the time. What do we got? Archon, and this is exactly what I meant by a lot of the time, but not all of the time. Well, actually, I could play this turn differently than I originally intended. So let's just start with On Thin Ice. Use that to remove the Archon. Then I can play this. Batch. Access to one white already. I think I want green green now. And then I'll go ahead and just drop the Enchantress. Possible I do want to fetch basic planes there, so that next turn I have white white for both of those spells. Yeah, so basically the red white initiative deck sucks. Alright, final round opening hand does not have an enchantress effect. I have very respectable mana, so I'm thinking about keeping this anyway. But my general heuristic is like mulligan once every time looking for an enchantress effect. Fuck is five. It's not acceptable. Uh, this is four, and it is not acceptable. <sighs> plan get lucky? My plan might be keep these four cards. Hope to draw into an Enchantress effect. Um, not a fan of this situation, obviously. Ooh, don't underground see me. I'm bad against that land. Uh, absolutely did not want to see another land drop. I have two white sources in hand. This is just going to be green. Uh... Um, Magic Online keeps pairing me against Reanimator. Yeah, we're uh, very dead in this game one. Ten cards entered the revealed zone. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. So my opponent can get Grief, Black card to match, Force of Will, Blue card to match. Alright, so over here is what they chose. Animate Dead, Petal, Force, Grief, Reanimate, Scalding Tarn. Yeah, so my opponent gets to Grief me and then reanimate it as well. Like, it's not like it takes a card the second time around, but like it's just 9 power in play versus 6 power. Sure, sure, sure. Oh. Okay, it's it's going to be worse than I thought. That's an Archon of Cruelty. I know they have the reanimate. Um, at this point on my mulligan to four, I am comfortable conceding to uh, 12-ish power in play, really closer to 15. So I think we're going Endurance, Containment Priest, Ossification again. Um, do roughly the same sideboarding as before. I think I went these out, these out, one of these out one of these out, and I don't think I want to Veil of Summer for discard and counter magic. I, I think I just cannot afford to hold up mana. I just need to use my mana every turn that I can, as much of it as possible. I am on the play with a hand that makes a turn two rest in peace. I wish I had more mana. I don't think I can throw back a hand that has two copies of rest in peace. Like, I'm just resilient to discard which matters a lot. This land can safely be Savannah in a non-wasteland matchup. I will go ahead and Utopia Sprawl. I probably want extra green here, if I were to guess. Okay, my opponent is doing the hard discard a creature. They've discarded Atraxa. And now I put them to ye old Force of Will test. My opponent has passed their test. Bad news for me. They almost certainly have reanimate if they were willing to take a line that's this slow. Uh-huh. And indeed, there it is. So I imagine that beats me. Yeah. That gets grief and force of will, plus a few other cards. So I'm going to lose my rest in peace. My opponent going to Trex again next turn if they want. All right. Yeah. Bloodstained Mire, Lotus Petal, Force, Grief, Show and Tell. That's just 
so good. So there goes rest in peace. And grief goes bye bye. I've still got force of will plus blue card to contend with protecting Atraxa. Or my opponent could just go again if I remove it. Oh, nope, more, more pain. So now I assume I lose Destiny Spinner just because it's the card that's different. Endurance is a uh, card too late here. Uh, with 10 power in play and Force of Will backing up everything here, I, I'm comfortable conceding. Like, we're, we're not winning this, this matchup. All right, uh, that brings us to the end of the league here. Overall thoughts on the deck list. The scoreboard says we went two and three, which is not great, but is respectable. But in reality, one of our opponents just conceded the match, not the game, the match on like turn two after I removed their creature. So that doesn't actually bode well here. Um, kind of like I talked about in the deck tech, my biggest issue is that a bunch of my opponents could randomly remove enchantments in game one with things like uh, Brazen Borrower we saw, Prismatic Ending we saw, and these enchantments just aren't as sticky as they used to be. And like Fire Design has not been kind to this deck list in the same way that it has been kind to many other deck lists. If you kind of look at this deck, the things that are essentially new here are just removal spells. And while these removal spells are better than what the deck used to play, like it's not like the core of this deck has particularly gotten stronger. Like Sithis is quite old at this point. And Sithis was probably the last major upgrade to this deck. It's not like this deck isn't playing new cards, but the new cards that are here are either just sideboard cards or cards that are, you know, slight improvements. It's not like this deck is picking up Merktide Regent power level cards or anything like that. So while it was fun to play this for a league, I don't think I could in good faith recommend this deck. I don't even know that I could recommend it at the FNM level. Like this is a deck that I enjoy playing, that I've played a lot of in the past. It has been competitive in the past, but... Barring some major metagame change or a new very mana efficient broken enchantment being printed, I don't I don't know that I want to revisit this one in the not too distant future. Um would love to hear your thoughts about the deck in the comments, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day. If you made it this far in the video, please consider leaving me a like or comment on the way out. Have a great rest of the day. See ya!